democracy. Now, you know, you work as a journalist with Albanian UK TV station ALB TV. Interestingly, I'm on um, Friday of last week, I met an Albanian plumber. And I was chatting with him at the garage and he was saying, look, you know, Mr. Farage, we're not all bad people. And we're not saying, I want to get this straight with you, you know, we're not saying that you are a bad egg because you're Albanian. You know, we're not idiots. But I want to ask you, as an Albanian, when you see that report that Mark White has produced, and when you hear from Scott Benson, you know, who's telling you the truth about what's happened in Blackpool over the last 18 months, I just want to ask you, what the hell's going on? Uh, Nigel, uh, thank you very much for having me here. Uh, I would say that uh, I've been here for 22 years and I have been accepted in this society and integrated myself uh, in this society and I feel very welcome in Britain. Uh, what is happening right now, it is appalling to everyone. But I do believe that uh, in the media, part of it is emphasised to a, a certain degree. Uh, I, I'm not saying this is not truth, but uh, we've got some figures from Ministry of Justice uh, in the United Kingdom and... Uh, so far, in prisons of Britain, mm. it is uh, only a number of a thousand of 355 prosecuted in Britain from Albanians out of 200,000 uh, for the Albanian community. It is a huge number for the Albanian community, it's such a small community. But out of 330,000 people prosecuted in this country, it is not a huge number to emphasize well, we, the Albanians as a gang. I accept the point that we have our own problems here. I accept that point. But we don't want to add to them. And those figures you quoted, of course, cannot allow for the recent massive Correct. influx. And you know as well as I do that, that on TikTok, you know, the advertisements are Correct. come and join the drugs trade, you know, bags of cash and everything else. So those figures are likely to get a lot worse. Correct. Uh, I, I don't know whether they go a lot worse, but from our own community that we talk to these, uh, to a, a number that has been involved with this kind of gangs. Uh, majority there ended badly in, in the near future because it doesn't lead you anywhere. A lot of them ended up in prison, let's say. A lot of them ended up in debts. They had to leave the country, had to hide themselves. Yeah. So it is not a good thing. So I, my, my message out to the old Albanians here, do not go down that route. Do not follow the drugs route. And we emphasize this within our community quite a lot. Of course, it is, um, I would say, Media does play a lot, a big part on this. It's a bigger picture in the media, social media as well. Advertising, uh, for no reason, crimes, which <coughs> yeah. they do not happen, but they advertise as a crime. People get, uh, coming from a, a small country and a poor country like Albania, which is one of the poorest countries in Europe, but it's, a but it's a peaceful but it's, country. It's a peaceful country. It's a NATO member. It's a, absolutely. It's, a, it's, it's a holiday destination. I mean, let, let me ask you this. You know, we talked about the crime thing. Let me ask you this. Regardless of whether people are coming with criminal intent or not, if they pay a trafficking gang to bring them over the English Channel, should anybody from Albania be entitled to claim refugee status? No. I, I do say and I do agree with the British government that they should not get entitled a refugee status. So we should. Those they should not. So those people they from not. Albania that cross the English Channel via the criminal trafficking gangs should Correct. be sent straight back to Tirana. Well, Sending back to Tirana is a different story, but what I'm saying is they should not take the route of trafficking. Well, they should no, try to come my, to this country in a legal and way. And we understand that. And, and I totally and, agree with and, that. And, and perhaps some of the angriest people in Britain Correct. are those that have come here legally in the last couple of years, where you know, actually it's quite an expensive, lengthy process, as it should be, it to is. go through. So why shouldn't we, with everyone that comes through that route, who, as I agree with you totally, should not be allowed from Albania to claim asylum, not refugee from status. Albania, any Shouldn't country. we send them straight back? Well, you can send it straight back. I'm not saying that the country should not send them back. But what I'm saying is that these people are leaving that country, not because the country is a member of NATO, but because the country is in real poverty. Mm. They've got a most corrupted government, which European Union seems to accept it. OK? So yeah, yeah, they, yeah, well, you're, you're an applicant country. We are an applicant country, but then when they see this kind of mass migration of the country, because it does hurt my feelings, when in the last 100 years this country has been independent, mm. what we've produced is immigrants. So everybody left the country. And they're now leaving at an even faster rate. And now they're leaving to huge numbers. Well, 
Well, I, mean, I tell you, if I get my way, a lot of them are going to go back. So you'll be less depopulated. <laughs> and I want to thank you for coming on and, and, thank and you very you know, much. facing some very tough questions. It, it, must is be, a difficult question. it must be a difficult situation. To it be is in. a difficult situation. However, the country, as far as I know, uh, from the parliament, which I've read the last report, is a yeah. 1.5 million jobs to fill. You've got some young Albanians there, which they can fill this uh, jobs like a plumber. It's exactly what they should be doing. Like a yeah, plumber no, and an electrician. Stop doing illegal things. Thank you very much indeed. Pleasure.